Mr. Waddell. Uh, yeah, just quickly, number one, I'm going to reiterate what's already been said about Christie. That, I mean, <coughs> 2003, Gaspee 38, is that the 34. 34? 34 should have been implemented, right? Correct. And it wasn't. And it was partially, let me, it was partially implemented. The capital asset portion was not brought on, um, but there were other elements of the So now 2015, 14, this audit. Yes. So, I mean, that was a, that was a very large job to do. Yes. And it, it was, was very, very well done. Yes, it was a it was an extremely large undertaking, and I'm sure Christie's glad to be done with my question. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, because there were I had quite a few just to make sure that again, bringing on fifty million dollars and yeah, I just want to reiterate that and reiterate to the public that this should have been done in the past. It was not done in the past. It was done now, and it was done very well in one year. Yes, and again, it was. It's a big undertaking to implement the capital assets, but when you add on the fact that this should have been done in 2003. It just makes the job all that more difficult uh, when you have to go back and provide the supporting documentation and whatnot for these records. Right. And, and that's one reason that the audit was so long in getting out. Yes. There were, pe there were it, people saying, where's the audit? Where's the yes. audit? Where's the audit? And there was a reason yeah. the audit was late. It yes. wasn't that somebody was not doing their job. There was a reason. No, they, correct. There was, there was a lot of back and forth because as we implemented and, and the software got straightened out and the reports came. You know, I had numerous questions. We performed observations. Um, and, you know, some of the items we had to recalculate and go back, make sure that the periods were reasonable. So there was a fair amount of work on my end that also got um, pushed back on the Christie just to satisfy the audit opinion um, on the capital assets. But I think, again, we went final on the report about two weeks after the last bit of information. That was all that was holding it up to that point. Thank you. And 68, that's going to have to be done, you said? 68, yes. That'll be implemented in your December 31st. And that'll show up as a liability for us, right? <laughs> Correct. Whereas it, the actual liability is in the state, pun state pension, right? That is a big argument. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, that, yes, it's a huge argument. Yes, it's a proportionate share. Um, I understand where you're going. There's, there's yeah. some confusion <laughs> in that because you currently don't have a mechanism to pay that down. Right. It's paid down through rates. It's a... Uh, multiple employer cost sharing plan so if the town of hampton wanted to pay a million dollars a million dollars doesn't come off the town of hampton's liability right. only the small percentage of the liability would get credited to you and you know the state of new hampshire would take five hundred thousand of that yeah. off their liability i just want people to be aware of that so when that starts showing up as a liability that it's that it, it's not hampton's fault it's not no and i think that's part of uh part of having the discussion here it's not um, directly controlled by Hampton in that you are required to make the financial reporting change to record the liability and the other items related to it and disclose that. However, I guess the true, um, mm. the true adjustment to that is going to go through the ongoing contributions that are being used to pay down that liability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, uh, Selectman Bean brought it up, and I agree 100 percent, the compensated leave fund. Uh, it would just seem like a trust would be the, to have the money there would seem like a much smarter financial mm -hmm. decision, would you say? I mean, there are other ways of doing it to fund it. You there know, are other ways, go. but certainly as, you know, as an auditor, I feel that gives you the most flexibility um, if you are able to appropriate that money. Again, the concern really comes down to um, do you have a period where you're not able to appropriate that money and is that going to take away from services that you were looking to provide in other areas in any given fiscal year right. that hasn't happened yet but it's less likely that that would occur when you have a funded or a partially funded trust fund to help offset that so that in the case that that happens you you've got you know a rainy day fund to to help uh, avoid the impact of current services right. And I have one more question, and hopefully you can answer it. Can you make, can you give a definition or make people understand what the unassigned fund is? Unassigned fund balance, um, it would be the surplus, I would say, the surplus of the town. You have assets in the form of cash and receivables. You have true liabilities, um, you know, accounts payable and things like that then you have other restrictions on your, your reserves. Some of them are statutory where you're not allowed to spend money in the case of 
say a real estate trust fund, you have, you know the principal is remaining intact there. Um, you have other commitments on money that it's pledged maybe for an expenditure in a future period um, or as a budgetary encumbrance or other restrictions on that money where it hasn't been spent yet, it doesn't meet the definition of a liability, but there's a future claim on that money. The unassigned fund balance is, is what's left. It's the surplus, if you will. But it's not necessarily a cash. It is not a, a cash. savings account. It's it is not a savings account. No, the cash as an asset is is your cash. Commonly, um, you know, in some communities, Hampton has a fairly healthy cash balance. In some communities, a lot of your uh, unassigned fund balance can be in the form of receivables, non-cash. So, you know, people want sometimes in smaller towns will say, "Well, where's that money?" Well, it's in your property tax receivable, it's not necessarily in the bank. So yes, there's a distinction there. That's not cash. <laughs> cash is cash, but this is the the net difference of assets minus liabilities, less other restrictions or claims on the funds of the town. Right. I and mean, some people keep looking for a simple answer to a complex problem. Yeah, and, and it's nice it, if they did some investigation and learned what it's about. <clears throat> so that's it. That uh, and I just I'm gonna end and I just want to say thank you to Christy again. I mean, it's a super huge job, and I want people to realize that. Thank you, too, Scott.